Okay, so tannic acid um, solution. Um, this is taken from the CCI notes 9 backslash 5. It was produced uh, originally by Judy Logan and then revised by Lindsay Selwyn in 2007. So the first part of this is that tannic acid is a complex organic acid found in most plants. We're going to be utilizing it as a means of neutralizing corrosion products on ferrous based objects. The thing to remember is that tannic acid of different types uh, is usually identified by the species of plant from which they come. So when applied to iron, tannic acid reacts with the iron to form a product called ferric tannate. It is a somewhat porous blue-black film whose degree of protection can be controlled to some extent by the method of application. It produces a uniform finish that enhances the appearance of the object at a distance. Tannic acid produces a blue-black surface. It should not be used on objects originally intended to be brightly finished or painted, particularly steels. However, it is suitable for wrought or cast iron on which a black finish is appropriate. So as mentioned, tannic acid is going to convert an unstable iron object to a stable iron object by converting the oxides of iron into a stable ferric tannate film. That film will be blue to black in color and should provide an overall uniformed color to the object. It's important to recognize that this kind of application should only be undertaken on objects which would have historically had a black finish, not unlike this cannon. So a recipe for making a 10% solution of tannic acid weight to volume. The recipe includes 100 grams of tannic acid, 900 milliliters of deionized water, 50 mils of ethanol, and approximately 2 milliliters of phosphoric acid. So you might ask yourself, why do we use deionized water? Well, we use a clean water source because we want to avoid contamination when making our solution. Tap water contains soluble salts, which can act as electrolytes and speed up the corrosion of the metal. This would prove problematic, particularly given we're trying to stabilize the metal. Why would we use alcohol in our solution? Well, ethanol makes water wetter. So maybe you ask yourself, what the heck does that mean? What does it mean? Well, it means alcohol reduces the surface tension between water and the iron surface when we apply the tannic acid, making it easier for the tannic acid to penetrate into recessed areas. And then the final element of our recipe is phosphoric acid. So why is phosphoric acid used? Well, the fast phosphates that are found in the phosphoric acid will free up iron, and that is iron electrons, and facilitate the production of ferric phosphate. There's a cautionary note here. If you use too much phosphoric acid, it can etch the metal surface and create white deposits and crystallization on the surface of the object. All right, so the actual mixing of the tannic acid. Um, as mentioned already, the recipe and all of its elements are already in the fume hood. And of course, we're going to use the fume hood because tannic acid, when it becomes airborne, that's in the powdered form, this material here. Um, yeah, once, uh, once airborne it can cause uh, respiratory problems and you'll get a little irritated if you're breathing that powder in. So we're executing the making of the tannic acid within an extraction system. Um, our assistant for the making of our tannic acid is the ever popular Mr. Brian Ford. Um, and uh, Brian's now going to uh, start the process of making the tannic acid. So the first step here is to add 50 mils of uh, ethanol to uh, 900 or 800 mils of uh, deionized water. So in it goes. Look at that. And of course it's on a hot plate on low heat uh, just to warm things up to help with uh, the dissolving of the tannic acid powder. And then Brian's going to slowly start to add the tannic acid to the solution and mix it up. And you notice the cooler the water is, the more the tannic acid sort of uh, congeals and doesn't mix and become quite homogeneous with the solution. It takes a little time, a little bit of agitation and stirring. And that is the complexity of making uh, a tannic acid solution that is 10% uh, weight to volume. And of course it's not a 10% solution. 
Um, Brian will add all of the solute, which is the tannic acid powder, and when he's completed that, he's then going to add the remainder of the deionized water to have one liter of solution, which will be that 10% weight to volume of tannic acid. We'll come back after Brian has um, completed that. 10% solution, stock of tannic acid, mixed weight to volume, it's all prepped. The next part of this process will be to how to take the 10% solution and create a 2.5% solution with a specific pH between 2.2 and 2.4. Alright, so how to take a 10% solution, weight to volume of tannic acid and create a 2.5% solution. So here's the stock 10% solution and to make a 5% solution, it stands the reason that you'd simply have to add equal parts water to equal parts tannic acid. So in this case, you would take 100 mils of tannic acid in a 10% solution, to which you will add 100 mils of deionized water. And you now have a 5% solution. Now the next stage of the process would be to make a 2.5% solution, which again, we would take the 5% that we've just made, which is 200 mils in volume, and we'll be adding equal parts of water to that to make a 2.5% solution. Real simple math here. So, take your 200 mils of 5%, dump it into your container, add 200 mils, of deionized water and what you now have is a 2.5 percent solution of tannic acid. Come stop. Right, so the next phase in the process will be to establish a pH of the solution at 2.2 to 2.4. To do that we'll be using a pH meter, a Fisher Scientific Acumet. Uh, the first stage of this process is to ensure that your pH meter is calibrated. So what we have right now is a four buffer solution to which the electrodes of the pH meter have been immersed. We'll turn the machine on and it should be reading four, but unfortunately it's reading 3.9. So the next phase of this process would be to calibrate the machine. So we'll do that. So. After standardizing the machine, we now have a stable reading of 4 on the pH meter. So the next step is going to be to take a pH reading of our particular solution. So next stage is to hit standby on the pH meter, remove the electrodes from the known solution, take a deionized water, flush the electrodes, give them a good rinse, And then take our 2.5% of tannic acid, immerse the electrodes in the tannic acid solution, hit standby and see what our pH reading is. We have a reading of 3.09. We're waiting for the machine to indicate that it's stabilized, so it is giving us a reading of 3.9. So the next step is going to be to attempt to drop the pH of the solution between 2.2 and 2.4. How we do that is to add some phosphoric acid. Now what we've done with our phosphoric acid is we won't be adding it in a pure form because this is a um, pretty heavy duty uh, concentration of phosphoric acid. So if we were to add this directly to the solution, uh, the pH would drop quite rapidly and we'd be with a pH that was too intense and too acidic. So we've added water about uh, 20 mils of water to which we've added four drops of the phosphoric acid, so that's diluted it quite a bit. And we will add drops of that to the solution and stir it with a glass stir rod. So I put the pH meter back on standby, remove the electrodes, one, two, three drops, stir it up. Immerse the electrodes, hit standby again and see if we have much of a change. So we did get a drop to 2.87. So we repeat the process again, remove the electrodes. Oh, should hit standby first. 
broke the $10,000 machine. Now one, two, three, four drops. Mix it up. It's like cocktails on a Saturday evening, right, Brian? Delicious. Just like it. Immerse the electrodes back in, which is not like cocktails on a Saturday evening. Electrodes in your drink. Uh, and we have a reading of 2.71. Hmm. Slowly dropping. Oh, 2.70. Something with four drops, right, Brian? That was right there. Hmm. How many drops should we add now? Ten drops. Ten drops? I'm with you. Let's hit standby. Electrodes out. Eyedropper, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven for good measure. Stir. Electrodes in. Stand by. <gasps> Mr. Ford, I believe that you are absolutely correct in your assertion that we should use ten drops. We now have a reading of 2.37, which if I understand simple math, is between 2.2 and 2.4. Wait, let me, yeah. Wait, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. That's good, right there then, all right.